And up next, more medical breakthroughs with Marvin Hausman. That's next on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. Dr. Marvin Hausman received his MD degree from New York University School of Medicine. He's a board-certified urological surgeon. His 30 years of drug development and clinical care experience at various pharmaceutical companies. Dr. Hausman is president of the Northwest Medical Research Partners. Now, that's a firm that specializes in the identification and acquisition of breakthrough pharmacological and nutraceutical products. And here he is on Coast to Coast, Dr. Marvin Hausman. Doctor, how are you? Thank you, George. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. A pill to make us live until 100. I'll take two. What do you think? Well, I'm on a selfish mission. I would like to live to be 100. I'd like to be able to live to be 120 with the same bodily functions I have today at 68. That's the key, to have a, uh, to have a long-term life and have it uh, prolonged, but have it good and beneficial to humanity. Can we do that? Absolutely. Uh, there was a man by the name of uh, Hayflick at Stanford who uh, programmed the computer to remove diseases, uh, and he removed cancer, removed heart disease, and his calculation was that a cell lives to be 120 years if you remove all diseases. So if you take the whole body composite, we should be able to, on a bell-shaped curve, m- max out at 120 years. But, of course, you know, your average years would be 90 to 100, but you want to live those with good bodily function. Yep, you do want a quality of life. Is it a double-edged sword, Marvin, here in that, you know, the, the economy's bad, the world population continues to grow, who knows what's going to happen in the next 20 years? Do we really want to prolong lives when things are go- headed that way? Well, I, I, you know, it's, this is an interesting question. What happens is that uh, <laughs> people turn inward at this point when they have no money. Uh, they, they have, they're unhappy. They say, well, look, let me, let me take care of myself because I, I'm the one who has to be the, uh, the you know, survivor. So it's just the opposite. I think people then turn within and try to live longer. Uh, I, you know, if you have good bodily function when the, when these adversities occur, I think you can survive it. it it's, a, it's all positive. It's a mental outlook. Why is it that later in life we become more knowledgeable about health, about our own bodies, what to eat, what not to eat, and when we're younger, 20s, 30s, we simply don't care about that? Because we take life for granted when we're younger. Uh, as you get older, you get wisdom. You look around, you see your friends who become ill, and you say, well, gee, I don't want that to happen to me. Um, young people take, I, when I was young, you don't think anything's going to happen to you. I mean, as a resident in, in surgery uh, in Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, we'd stay up for one day, two days. We don't think uh, anything about it. But you, earlier, and, and you were talking about heart disease um, in a 10-hour ta- day. Um, and there yeah. are recent studies that show if you take some biologic models and you stress them by keeping them awake, you're decreasing their lifespan. And I think as we get older, we, we realize that we've done injury to ourselves, and now we're taking stock of that, and we want to improve. Tell us about yourself, Marvin. How would you get into medicine? Why would you do it? Uh, well, I, I was taken by a, a general practitioner when I was in Brooklyn. I had fallen and injured myself quite severely, and he had to come out at night and suture up my lip. It had ripped open. I used to like to climb fences, and I, I just couldn't believe that such a nice man showed up at my house and, at night to, to take care of me, and I wanted to be like him. And so I, I decided that I would become a doctor, and I went to medical school, went to New York University School of Medicine in New York, and then he turned around and wanted me to practice with him, and after, before I graduated, he died. So um, it wasn't meant to be, and then I went on to general surgery in Mount Sinai Hospital in New York, and then became a transplant surgeon at UCLA and, and specialized in pediatric um, uh, congenital defects. He was one of those few doctors at the time that actually made house calls. Remember those yes. days? Yes, yes. It was, it was, <laughs> I just remember him I was lying in bed looking up at him, and there was his face, and it was a sense of reassurance. and It made, it made my life change. Marvin, I was born in 1950, and about a year and a half ago, my mother found the invoice that the uh, the doctor, he's since gone to Dr. McGough, Joseph McGough, out in Detroit, sent her and she paid, and my dad paid for my birth, $25. <laughs> that was it. It's unreal. Yeah, in those days. T- tell me about your interest in natural foods and supplements and vitamins. 
Well, that interest came in, in 1995 when my mother was diagnosed with dementia. Um, I was quite quite upset, and I looked around at the diagnoses of dementia, and everybody was saying, oh, it must be Alzheimer's disease. And I remember going to a meeting in Chicago at the uh, International Alzheimer's Meetings, and there were 3,000 people there, and I looked around the room, and I, uh, <laughs> there were only three doctors, and I was one of them. I said, there's something wrong with this picture. So I started devoting myself to uh, helping diagnose her dementia and, and started working on Alzheimer's disease. And so for the last uh, 15 years, um, I've devoted myself to developing diagnostic tools and, and, and pharmacologic drugs for Alzheimer's disease. And I quickly realized that no drug treats Alzheimer's disease. You only treat the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. And if you look back over, since 1995, there hasn't been one new drug put out that actually can prevent Alzheimer's disease. So I was working with some people at Harvard Medical School on, uh, on nerve cell death, what, what kills nerve cells when your brain produces the protein that's caused in Alzheimer's disease. It's called amyloid. And we found that oxidative stress, that inflammation around the nerve, is what leads to nerve cell death. And we also found that iron has to be oxidized. It has to lose electrons. Um, and it was fascinating to learn this uh, because no one had thought, how does a nerve die with oxidation? That means oxygen is good and bad. You have bad oxygen when you metabolize uh, food. And that bad oxygen, if not controlled, will lead to nerve cell death. And so we started looking at the substances that could prevent the oxidation of iron. And these antioxidants uh, were found in foods. And one of the most potent antioxidants that we, we discovered was uh, an antioxidant called L-ergothionine. And we also noted that no human can produce ergothionine, but you have transport systems in many cells in your body for ergo. And then we looked around and found which foods have ergo, and we found that mushrooms uh, are the only food in the world that can produce ergothionine to a high degree. Now, with, with these natural foods and supplements that we take, um, why can't the body do it on its own? Why do we need that boost? It's, that's a great question. I think that's the $64 million question to living a long time. I think you have to go back in history to early man. Uh, early man didn't have synthetic chemicals. Early man didn't take single nutrients. What early man took is whole foods. Early man ate, or early women, uh, took grains, took uh, uh, tubers Nuts. from the ground. They ate mushrooms. In fact, it's a million years ago, early man was using uh, psychological, you know, hallucinogenic mushrooms because uh, they, they, were, they were rampant throughout the world at that time. And so we, we've moved away from this. And I think one of the biggest mistakes was the synthesis of vitamin C by Albert St. Georgie. You know, we had scurvy on ships when, when right. they were uh, uh, for six months, and then he synthesized a single nutrient. Sure, he cured scurvy, but we don't have scurvy anymore. Now the whole world is looking at single nutrients, and they're forgetting about whole foods. That's a good point. Uh, good point indeed. Now, dur during the ancient days, let's, let's say mushrooms, for example. How, you know, there are a lot of poisonous mushrooms out there. How did they know? I guess it was trial and error. Somebody ate a mushroom and it killed them, so they decided we can't eat these anymore. What, what happened? How did that happen? <laughs> that's, a, that's the Darwinian principle or evolutionary principle. You know, you look around, you find that uh, someone dies. I mean, you start thinking about it. What, what did I do wrong? Well, also in the Middle Ages, when people used to show up at castles, some of the people didn't go home. They found that they were spiking the wine with poisons. So it's quite obvious when you look around and see your, your, your neighbors dying, you think, well, what happened? So I think it was trial and error, and they found which mushrooms were edible and which mushrooms were not. Marvin, we'll talk more about all of this when we come right back. Fascinating. I'm George Norrie, back in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. We're with Dr. Marvin Hausman. Uh, Dr. Hausman, what do you mean by the whole natural foods? What are they? Well, we're a complex biological organism. Every person is listening in, you, I, um, a complex of tissues, uh, uh, cells. The body's made up of a complex uh, a system. It has bionutrients, it has enzymes, and it, you, you don't wake up in the morning, you wake yourself up in the morning. And so you feed this, and you have to feed it and stoke the engine of the body, metabolism, and you need whole foods. Uh, whole food is an orange. Uh, we talked about vitamin C and Albert St. Georgie and scurvy. Well, if you want vitamin C, eat the orange. If you want what's in a the potassium in, a, in, a, in, a, in an apple or in a banana, um, you, you eat the apple. Yeah. 
Uh, you don't extract it, and when you extract it, you're, you're, you're not having the natural coenzyme structures, the backup. It's like going, a cop going into a building by himself. Uh, that analogy doesn't work. You want backup. It's the same thing with foods. You don't take single nutrients. You have backup enzymes that help your body use those foods. These vitamins that they make and these supplements that, that they make, are they all synthetic? Yes, uh, most of them are. Uh, some are extracted, but when you extract, you're making almost the, the mirror image. Uh, if you synthesize something in life, uh, it's a complex. When you look in the mirror, you see the right side and left side of your body. The same thing with drugs. You have a right-handed drug and a left-handed drug. Most of the times when you synthesize a chemical or a drug, you're making the opposite structure of what exists in nature. You're not making the same structure. So if you make synthetic vitamin C or vitamin E, you're making the opposite mirror image, and you don't have the coenzyme structure that would normally be found in a food. Um, if you extract substances from certain foods, then you can maybe bring along the coenzyme structure that helps your body make it bioavailable or metabolize it. One, one of my doctors uh, in Los Angeles uh, every year wants me to go through what he calls the Berkeley blood test. And apparently it's a very efficient blood test that checks just about everything. And he's the kind of doctor, Marvin, who goes right by the numbers. You know, if the numbers are in line, he's happy. If they're out of whack, he wants to address it and fix it. And uh, he, he told me uh, a few months ago, he said, I want to increase your vitamin D. And he was, he was a very big... Uh, stickler on that. How come? Well, vitamin D is probably the least understood and mismanaged vitamin in healthcare. And I say that without hesitation. I mean, I'm established in medicine, immunologist, transplant surgeon for many years. Mm -hmm. We think inside a box. We forgot about vitamin D. And by the way, vitamin D is not a vitamin. It's a pro-hormone. And the reason it's a pro-hormone is that your body can synthesize vitamin D when you sit, go in the sun. Mm -hmm. And the, the definition of a vitamin is something that your body can't make, but you'll die without. Wow. So vitamin D is not a vitamin. It's misnamed. And uh, by the way, the U.S. government has been underdosing uh, people in the United States for the last 30 or 40 years. The American Academy of Pediatricians came out uh, two years ago and said that a child who's age uh, five or six should get 400 international units of vitamin D a day. For years, the RDA advised by the government was 40 international units. Oh the RDA advice for adults was 400. We think today you should have 2,000. And the Canadian government just came out with a statement that there's an economic devastation in health care in Canada. It came out about three weeks ago because of vitamin D deficiency. And they estimated that vitamin D deficiency is causing an economic collapse equal to $14.4 billion in the healthcare system in Canada because, you know, because of their northern latitude and less sunshine equivalent, they're vitamin D deficient. Now, is, is vitamin uh, D3 what we're talking about? What is that? Vitamin D3 is produced by animals in the skin. Vitamin D2 is produced by plants and mushrooms. Um, vitamin D3 and D2 are considered equal because what happens is that this pro-hormone is then activated by your liver and your kidney. And so whether you have vitamin D3 produced in your skin or vitamin D2, which you take, say, by mouth, produced by plants or mushrooms, it, they're both converted into the active form. And you have receptors throughout your body for vitamin D. And the, the government, the NIH, has uh, come out and said that, that most tissues in the body have receptors for vitamin D. So the importance of vitamin D uh, cannot be underestimated. Now, is, is that the vitamin you want, though, either D2 or 3, or, or is there something else? Well, you want vitamin D active, uh, if I'm answering your question correctly. So whether you sit in the sun... And the recommendation is uh, to sit in the sun for 20 or 30 minutes. You'll make 10,000 international units of vitamin D3. Huh. That would then become activated. The other nice. way is to take um, um, a whole food like a mushroom that has vitamin D inside of it, and you take enough to equal 10,000 international units. So you can get it both ways. What are the best uh, mushrooms to uh, ingest? 
Well, all mushrooms make vitamin D or 